Envision a time when refrigeration meant a hefty block of ice and meals ascended floors via petite elevators. Do you recall the charming vintage tub with feet resembling those of a runner? Or the door that can't quite decide to shut or stay open, opting to straddle the middle ground? Today, we delve into the archives of domestic history to uncover 20 antiquated home amenities. A relic of Victorian-era homes, coal chutes facilitated fuel delivery for heating systems. These metal conduits, often concealed within foundations, dispensed coal into basement storage areas, leaving indelible marks on walls. Varied transportation methods, from manual labor to mechanized systems, underscored societal and technological advancements. Interestingly, coal chutes were not only functional but also contributed to the architectural character of homes, with some featuring decorative embellishments or ornate designs. Laundry chutes, facilitating laundry transport from upper floors to basements, streamlined household chores, deriving from industrial counterparts used for coal and refuse, Residential chutes emerged to maintain hygiene by segregating soiled linens. Their inclusion symbolized affluence in the early 20th century, denoting ample clothing reserves. Even Florence Nightingale endorsed their use, outlining guidelines for sterile hospital environments. Surprisingly, these chutes occasionally served as clandestine exits or hideaways, notably among asylum inmates. In yesteryears, a parlor signified social stature, acting as the venue for familial gatherings and ostentatious displays. This opulently furnished enclave hosted significant life events, boasting comfortable seating and often a piano. Over time, evolving into the modern living room, it witnessed the advent of TVs and entertainment systems. Remarkably, the parlor was meticulously adorned with intricate decor and ornate furnishings, reflecting the homeowner's refinement and taste. Clawfoot tubs, dating back to the 1800s, boast distinctive designs, featuring claw-like feet. Initially crafted from cast iron and coated with porcelain, these tubs were a luxury commodity, adored by the affluent. Their genesis traces back to the Netherlands in the mid-1700s, possibly influenced by Chinese imagery. The process for producing these porcelain-clad tubs was pioneered by David Buick, renowned for establishing the Buick Motor Company. Knob and tube wiring, an early electrical system, prevailed from the late 19th to early 20th centuries. Employing single insulated copper conductors held in place by porcelain insulators, this cost-effective method predates contemporary wiring standards. Notably, knob and tube wiring was characterized by its simplicity and durability, with some installations still functional in older homes today, despite advancements in electrical technology. From the early to mid-20th century, homes often featured blade bank slots, typically integrated into bathroom walls or medicine cabinets. These slots provided a safe repository for used razor blades, shielding against potential hazards to children or pets. While some were rudimentary wall or cabinet incisions, others featured ornate blade slot tiles. Their utility waned with the advent of disposable razors in the 1970s by companies like Gillette and Bic rendering blade banks obsolete. Renovation endeavors occasionally unveil caches of rusty razor blades, offering glimpses into bygone domestic practices. Dumbwaiters, diminutive freight elevators, facilitated interfloor item transport, notably food, in multi-story dwellings. Innovated by George W. Cannon, these mechanical aids streamlined domestic logistics, evolving with technological advancements. Notably, Dumbwaiters were essential for efficient service in large homes and establishments, ensuring prompt delivery of meals and supplies between floors without the need for manual labor. Dutch doors, also dubbed stable or half doors, are characterized by their horizontal division. This ingenious setup permits the upper half to swing while the lower half remains stationary. Originating in 17th century Netherlands, they were pragmatic for farmhouses, admitting light and air while deterring livestock. Prevalent in Dutch regions of New York and New Jersey pre-Revolutionary War, these doors featured diverse materials like wood, PVC, and fiberglass. They were a common sight in Irish cottages, thwarting livestock ingress while inviting sunlight into dim, smoky interiors. 
before indoor plumbing, wash stands, fashioned from mahogany or walnut, held wash basins and pitchers for daily ablutions. A fixture of morning and bedtime routines, they dwindled in relevance with the advent of modern plumbing. Interestingly, washstands often featured intricate carvings and ornate designs, adding a touch of elegance to the bedroom or washroom decor. Sleeping porches, be they decks or balconies, provided alfresco reprieve during warmer seasons. Shielded by screens or windows to deter insects, they were a pre-AC era oasis. Originating in the early 1900s, they represented a fusion of practicality and leisure. Beyond slumber, they doubled as serene retreats for daytime relaxation. Milk doors, miniature portals for dairy deliveries, epitomized convenience in a pre-refrigeration era. Integrating seamlessly into home facades, they safeguarded provisions while streamlining delivery logistics. Remarkably, milk doors often featured insulated compartments to maintain the freshness of dairy products until retrieved by home owners, exemplifying early innovations in home convenience. Which windows, or Vermont windows, grace American architecture, predominantly in Vermont? Set diagonally within gable end walls, they align with the roof pitch, accommodating full-sized windows in narrow spaces. Popular in 19th century farmhouses, their prevalence has waned in modern constructions. Legend suggests the moniker stems from a belief that witches cannot traverse tilted windows, although this theory lacks credibility. Alternately dubbed coffin windows, their association with coffin removal remains ambiguous. Embedded within expansive abodes, servant quarters provided lodging for household staff, segregating them from main living areas. Symbolic of socioeconomic disparities, these quarters underwent architectural evolution alongside societal shifts. Interestingly, servant quarters often featured basic amenities compared to the lavish comforts enjoyed by the homeowners, highlighting the stark divide between social classes during that era. Boot scrapers, commonplace in the 18th and 19th centuries, facilitated footwear cleaning. Fabricated from metal, they eradicated mud, snow, or debris from shoes before entering buildings. Available in myriad designs, from rudimentary metal sheets to intricate cast iron motifs, they adorned house entrances. In urban locales during the horse-drawn carriage era, they were indispensable against soiled streets. In some instances, they were seamlessly integrated into architectural elements, like wall projections or recesses. Transom windows, adorning older structures above doors, served as ventilation conduits in pre-AC days. Positioned high to admit sunlight while ensuring privacy, these windows facilitated airflow. Operated by specialized tools called transom operators, they blend functionality with architectural charm. Interestingly, transom windows were often adorned with decorative motifs or stained glass, adding a touch of elegance to the home's entryway. Pre-cell phone era, homes often incorporated phone nooks, cozy alcoves housing landline telephones. Situated in hallways or living rooms, they ensured audibility and accessibility. Complete with shelves for directories or notes and seating for comfortable conversations, they were a communication hub. Advancements in technology diminished their prevalence, relegating them to decorative or storage roles in modern homes. A staple of grand residences, the butler's pantry bridged the kitchen and dining room, housing culinary accoutrements and facilitating meal service. Reflective of hierarchical dynamics, it remains a vestige of a bygone era in select contemporary abodes. Interestingly, butler's pantries often boasted intricate cabinetry and specialized storage solutions, showcasing the meticulous organization required for seamless household management during their heyday. Prevalent before drywall's ascendancy, lath and plaster comprised wooden laths and wet plaster for wall and ceiling finishing. Esteemed for its insulating properties, it endured for its efficacy and refinement. In heritage structures, lath and plaster ceilings remain pivotal for fire prevention, shielding timber joisted floors from conflagration. Picture rails, 
ornamental molding strips affixed near ceilings provided an elegant alternative to wall-mounted picture hangers. Combining practicality with aesthetics, they showcased homeowners' artwork without compromising interior integrity. Interestingly, picture rails allowed for easy rearrangement of displayed artwork, enabling homeowners to effortlessly refresh their living spaces with new compositions or seasonal decorations. California coolers, or cooler cabinets, were a Western U.S. culinary storage solution in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Featuring slatted or screen shelves with top and bottom vents, they harnessed natural convection to preserve perishables. Sided away from sunlight, often adjacent to kitchens, they predated household refrigeration, serving as makeshift chills. Even today, these coolers find utility for housing beverages and desserts. Pre-electricity-era homes relied on iceboxes to chill provisions. These non-mechanical refrigerators, also dubbed cold closets, gained traction in the early 20th century. Ice, nestled in the top compartment, circulated cold air downward, preserving perishables. Constructed with insulated walls of tin or zinc, packed with materials like cork or sawdust, these iceboxes prolonged food freshness sans modern preservation methods. Additionally, families often had to relay on regular ice deliveries to replenish the melting ice and maintain the cooling effect.